corner, and he brings it all the way back. Got Lindquist open, coming across the middle, and breaks two tackles for the touchdown. The the outside. Will have it, wide open. I'm not exactly sure. Side line, and he's going to go. Touchdown, first play in the offensive play. Welcome, Hawkington football fans, to Dave Hughes Stadium. Today, October 18th, your Hillers taking on the uh, Westwood Wolverines. Hi, I'm Rick Desina today in the booth with the <laughs> Mr. Everything, yeah. Mike Terosian, uh, as we bring you action, an early game today because of the Triple E, uh, triple e threat still out there looming in Hawkington. So we've moved this game to 3.30 here this Friday, so no lights tonight. Mike, uh, never knew three letters could be so uh, difficult. They've, they've impacted quite a bit, not just the football program, I'm sure. So uh, everything, I, you know, like I it. don't know at H Cam they must think we don't work or something. Well, it, uh, it, it's it's know. great. It's great for the fact that we have the volunteers that we do that can get out of work early, or some that don't work at all, which makes it fantastic. So the Hillers uh, can come back home uh, after a tough night last week at. At uh, Medfield, where they lost 28 to 14, it moves their record to one and four. As I said, they uh, are bringing or meeting the Westwood Wolverines, who come in at a two and three record. Both teams in Division Four South: Westwood number five with that two and three record, Hopkinton number nine with their one and four record. So a big, I'm guessing a big uphill climb for them to make the playoffs. Uh, two more games two left more. in, in yeah. the Tri Valley League. Uh, um, this one and uh, next one, uh, they'll be hosting Hollis next week. So uh, that's a, a, a big uh, big test for them as well as Hopkins 5-0 and, and, and doing pretty well in Division 5 South. So today's game is, uh, is pretty impactful in terms of what happens in the next couple of weeks. Uh, as we watch the captains uh, move out to the field, we have captain number four, Max Lakasha. Number 10, Robbie Bernardin. Uh, number... I'm looking for him. Yeah, I know there's more. Number 25, 25. Zach Levy, and number 54, 54, Luke McDonald. On the other side of the field, they have Captain Jake Paff, Captain Dylan Mahoney, Captain Kevin McDonald, number 34, Captain Colin Fay, and number 56, Captain Alex Solias. So there's uh, quite a few guys out there for the coin toss. Um, Mike, as, as we begin to get into this game um you know I, I don't know how many games you've watched and i've only seen one but uh, i've looked at the numbers a little bit and it looks like this robbie bernard and as a one-year starter is uh is can throw the ball he's pretty poised back there and he, he looks pretty good you know as I, I said for a one-year starter right and, and as you said i haven't seen many of the games but i hear a lot of talk about that kid's arm yeah and he's got the poise he's got the size and he's got the a, a number one receiver who started to uh, filter out uh, certainly the last game I saw and when you look at the stat sheet uh, Cole Salyard's 18 receptions is has really stepped forward as the number one guy So Hopkins and uh, wins the toss and defers and will kick off the sounds start of this game sounds like the NFL, right? Yeah Hey, let's so uh, let's, gonna, uh, let's turn things over to Jay. Yeah, we're gonna let Jay uh, do his announcement, and we'll have the national anthem and the bands here. So we'll get back to you. Brad Pindle and captains Jake Pfaff, Dylan Mahoney, and Kevin McDonald. The Hillers are led by Coach Dan McLean and captains Max Latasha, Robbie Bernardin, Luke McDonald, and Zach Levy. As always, the Drive Out Tri Valley League is committed to the highest ideals of sportsmanship and establishing a healthy environment for interscholastic competition. The league will not tolerate negative statements or actions directed towards competitors game officials, or fans in attendance. Such actions include taunting, trash talking, and berating the players, coaches, and officials. The TVL has adopted a zero tolerance policy. Warnings will not be issued, and vendors will be ejected. Please respect all decisions made by officials. Please respect fans, coaches, participants, and opponents alike. Today we fly the flag at half-mast in remembrance of Congressman Elijah Cummings. Now please rise for the playing of our national anthem as performed by the HHS band led by Craig Hay.
Once again, a terrific rendition by the Hopkins and High Band. And I'm telling you, the last couple of games, they've got maybe the entire band here. They're led by Greg Hay, um, who's been doing a terrific job. Uh, you, since you, been you do know that's just a volunteer pep band. I know, but these it's, are, it's, these are just a volunteer it, pep band. It, it, there's there's got to be 80 of them. I, when I first started covering the games, there was five of them. Yeah. And they used to be in the corner of those bleachers over there, and there was five guys. Now, they take up. A quarter of the stands. And uh, then you get another quarter of the stands for the student section. And then the rest of the parents yeah. get the other half, if they can fit in here. No, it's uh, it's it's always good to have the band here, especially on a, on a beautiful Friday afternoon. It's probably about 60 degrees, a light wind. I saw the flag breeze a little bit. Yeah. Um, we got lucky a little bit in, in terms of timing. We had a lot of rain over the last couple of days. I'm guessing the field's in pretty good shape. It looks great, uh, but it could be soggy in the corners, and we're going to find out as the game goes on. Yeah, and as everyone knows, uh, the infamous crown on this field, it's got, what, like a five-foot crown? Yeah. And it drains really well, but the corners are the soggiest. So, uh, Jay, j just mentioned upstairs, John Ritz all by himself in front of cameras. Uh, up there, he's going to be uh, keeping an eye on everything. So, And then we got... Uh, our friend on the music, Brian Herr, keeps us and the fans going uh, between snaps and timeouts and whatnot to keep the, keep the juices flowing. So we're ready to go as Hopkinton will kick from north to south. We got a little equipment adjustment here in the front. And. Mike, can you see the number of the kicker? The number is not that clear from here. It could be Tommy Hamlet. Number two? Number is there two? two? No, there's no nine. two. Number, number nine? nine? We, don't have a, we don't have a nine on the roster. Okay, so he's a squib kick, and it's picked up by one of the up men, and he stopped pretty much where he fielded it at about the 33-yard line. Number six, Kyle Burgess on the return. So... The Wolverines will set up at about the 34-yard line, first and 10. It's good to have the the booth official in here today. We started last game without one, and we couldn't tell you what how much time was left. Oh, that's why the clock wasn't where I just thought the clock malfunctioned. No, but no, that makes no. sense. No, I tell you what, it's nice about uh, having the clock. Not only having the scores and the yardage and everything, but when we don't see a call, <laughs> yeah. he tells us. Well, he fills us in. You can also inform <laughs> us of what the call was. Sometimes we don't yeah. understand. Okay, so Westwood with Jake Pat. Oh, we got a whistle right out of the gate. I guess I don't know what he's doing, but helping out the offensive line, I guess. Right. Jake Paff, the quarterback in a spread formation. Two receivers to the left, two to the, three to the right. Quick throw to number seven. Number seven, Dylan Mahoney, tackled by Cole Salyards for a short gain. Picks up about yeah, a well, uh, long four. So we'll call it uh, yes. second and five, maybe. And then get right yeah. up to the wow. pretty much the same offense that uh, Hoppington can run. And a quick throw, same play, just to the other side. Same uh, duo. Yeah, that could be a first down. Half from Mahoney, and he just curled up at the, uh, yeah. at the first down and took the ball. So it's first down, the first first down. And they hurry right to the line, Mike. We're not going to have a lot of uh, in-between. Color commentation if they no, keep up like all. this. Which, which is good, <laughs> since I'm doing color. And the quarterback is rolling left. He's chased, he's chased. He just throws it to the feet of an intended receiver just to keep the sack from happening. It's Number 11. Pretty smart play by uh, Paff. So that's second and 10. And even with the clock stopped, they uh, get right up to the line of scrimmage. Gets his play. Looks like number 34. Colin Faye will stay in the backfield with Paff. Three receivers to the right, one to the left. And looked like there was some action there. Number one on the on the reception. And he's tackled by a host of hillers. Number one, Mark James. So he picks up about three yards on the play. So it'll be third and about seven at the Wolverine 48-yard line. Well, they're certainly not afraid to throw the ball. 
No, no, that seems, uh, it, it, you know, they're doing it. They're moving the ball every every play. So there's nothing wrong with that. And these plays are designed for that. So it should be third and seven. The marker across from us says second. A high snap. Paff has to get away. and he Oh, he, he does. He barely does, and he throws a – he got rid of the ball. Terrific uh, escapability as number 25, Zach Levy had him. And then number 28, Eric Davis was right there. So – Yep. Uh, he got out of it and was able to force an incomplete pass. And with the wholesale substitutions, it looks like they'll punt on fourth and seven. And they're very slow to change. So it is the fourth. They heard uh, our announcer, public address announcer, Jay Gold, announced the fourth down, and the down market guy uh, woke up. I can't see the, from where we are, I can't see the number of the punter. That's the but it's a fairly short punt. Salyard tells everybody to get away, poison it so it doesn't hit anybody. And a good hill of bounce. Yeah. And it's touched around the 31 yard line, 32 yard line by number 52, Lamb Dulia. So the Hills will take over on, on down, or not downs after the punt at 10 14 to go in the first quarter for their first offensive series. And it looks like we have the usual suspects out there, Bernardin and Levy, or I'm sorry, uh, Mulvaney uh, in the backfield. Two receivers to each side in the shotgun. And he looks right, and he throws right, and it's too long for number six, Brian Keefe. Just a little long there, Mike. Yeah, he got, he got a couple figures on it, that's about it, but he wasn't able to, uh, to make it stick. No, oh, I'm going to get you right up. I mean, this, if we complete some passes, this is going to be a pretty fast game. Yeah, we might be done by four. <laughs> <laughs> same formation. Mulvaney steps up to the left, gets some instruction. Well, not the same formation. Three to the right, three one to the, to right. the left. Uh, take a long and time on that. Run, a pass run option, and he takes it himself. And he gets stuffed around the 34-yard line for a pickup of about three. I think he had a lot, uh, a lot of trouble communicating. He, he spent a lot of time on that before that snap. Right, we're talking about, I don't know if he was talking to Mulvaney and he didn't, didn't quite get it. But now it's a, a tight formation left and they're wide right. And a wing to the right as well. And he's rolling to his right. He sees, he throws, he oh, throws wow. too low, and it's incomplete. The intended receiver is Pereira. It was just too low for him to get his hands on the. Yeah, Pereira was going down, and he was getting low enough, but it was still still too much. Not, not, not a good angle to try to catch anything. So fourth and eight brings in Tommy Bernardin, who looks like he's going to do the kicking. And... Number one, Mark James, and I. And is that number? Th I can't see the number. I can't see it. Seven, maybe. Dylan Mahoney, possibly. It's a nice kick, and it's not fair cut. Mahoney cuts to the left. Now he's got a few blockers ahead of him, straight up the field. Now gets out to about the 48-yard line of Westwood. So Westwood will start with pretty good field position on their second possession. If you're gonna kick. Punt, that's the way to be punting right now. The wind is blowing. It's not not a high wind, but no. it's, it's the flag you can't, is you moving can't go, You can't go by that flag over there because the middle of the field is where all the wind is at. Ask any uh, cameraman that's ever worked a the game. <laughs> <man>. <laughs> they'll tell you, they'll tell you the, way the, the way the wind blows. <laughs> Path call and signals. And he hands straight up to number 34. Hand off to Colin Faye. Colin Faye. I'm not sure if this is a visual thing, but uh, they like to snap it high to the quarterback. No, he's, he's, they don't like to snap it you high. That's just the way it's going. Right. <laughs> well, I, that or maybe he does like it that way. I have uh, no idea. No quarterback wants it over yeah. his head. Well, they don't want it over the head, but. He's having to go up. And, and it, what that does, Mike, that sets, uh, throws off timing. Sure. The quarterback's got to go find the ball. He can't be looking what's going on. And again, he's going to throw jumping. again. And he's throwing it downfield. One-on-one -on -one coverage with Pereira. Well, well covered. Intended for Mark James, but uh, Pereira was all over him. Yeah, kept his distance. No interference. 
Elias, the younger brother of Hayden Pereira, who played cornerback for the Hillers back in oh, oh, 2014, might have been the last 13, season he played. Yeah. He's a 50-year guy down at uh, South Virginia now, playing yep. the same position. So it's third and seven from the Hiller 49-yard line. Path a high snap, yeah. and he's got to get out of the. He's going to be sacked. He's going to be sacked by number 28, by Eric Davis, who you know Mike is the the problem with the high snap. Exactly. I mean, when I say he likes it high, but not over his head, I get that. But every every snap, he's had to jump to get. Yeah, and he had to tip that one to himself a little bit, and with the blitz coming off the edge, he had to. Uh, I, I just can't believe he hasn't talked to that center yet. To, Oh, I'm sure they've got a, a pile. Oh, personal foul against Westwood. It's going to back it up. I don't know what the personal foul was, but uh, that'll back him up, and certainly we'll have to punt. If the personal foul brings up about fourth and 30. This is not the kind of room you want to give the Hillers. No. Salyage and Keefe are be are are deep. And it's an end over end punt, but it just gets hung up in the wind and it's just gonna stop. And it bounces back for the Hillers all the way to the Westwood 46 yard line. So not a, not a great punt, but it got hung up in the wind and pulled back. Yeah, you don't get to see that this, that often. Uh, all these bounces check, going check, a certain team's way. Checked up like a, a pitching wedge coming into the green, yeah. spinning back. <laughs> I don't know what that means. You don't know? You never, <laughs> I don't go. You don't hit that little white ball anymore? Golf, no. All right. No, no. I, I had a tough time with the uh, windmill. Yeah, yeah, I know. That, the, just, whale, the whale mouth kept shutting on yeah, you. I know. Yep. And that clown, he's just so intimidating. <laughs> so Bernard in the shotgun with Mulvaney in a pistol formation, and we have a whistle and... Second to go against Westwood. He oh, what, are no, uh, what are we doing here? Offsides. Uh, oh. But I didn't, I didn't see anyone jump. I, I didn't see it either, but it could have been a subtle movement on the far side because that's where oh, the flag it, came from. It, you know what? We do have replay here. Oh, we got a little replay we can look at. Let's see if I can back that up a little bit. Well, you're trying that. I got to look at the game. So same formation, first and 15, 8.02 to go in the first quarter. Mulvaney splits to the right, and now we have another whistle. Well, so much for getting home by four. <laughs> uh, it's just a discussion, I think. So for folks at home uh, that aren't watching on YouTube, you can always catch our games on YouTube, and uh, we have a DVR version. So, like, if you show up for the sign in for the game too late, you can start, drag it back and start right from the beginning. All right, so it's uh, still first and 15. Bernard throws to, oh, the ball was popped up in the air. I don't know what happened. It bounced off the chest of of, uh, of Salyards. And oh, I'm not sure what happened. I saw it pop up and maybe he never got there. Same formation, second and 15. And he runs the option, pitch to Mulvaney. He gets the corner and is knocked out of bounds on the right side. He'll pick up about six or seven, maybe even eight. We'll call it third and third and seven. And the Hillers get right up to the to the ball again at the 44-yard line. And we'll call it third and seven. But Iden is talking to his receivers. Mulvaney in the backfield to the right. And he throws deep. He's got Salyards down Season. there. Oh, off his fingertips as, as Cole Salyards just had the, the defensive back, number seven, uh, Dylan Mahoney. He had a step on him, and the ball was out there, but just off his fingertips. And that'll bring up fourth and seven. Hill has left the punt. I'm not used to having this uh, little delay little broadcast. De little yeah. delay broadcast, and we can see the the replay. 
as it's being live streamed. And snap, and I think I think they might have missed one. I think the punter went down on his knees yeah. to get that ball. And the, oh, look at the and roll. A, and it goes gets into the end zone, possibly. Yeah. So that's a lucky break for the Wolverines. As that's right. It could have been a lot worse. As Dylan Mahoney let that ball go, and it made it all the way to the end zone. Probably rolled 15 yards into the end zone. Sure. But the punter, Bernard, was very close to getting his knee on the ground when he took the snap, and I... That would have been a dead ball. It's funny. You snaps to the quarterback a high, and you snaps to the kicker on the ground. All right, so the, the Wolverines will start their drive at the 20-yard line with 7.23 to go in the first. And path, run pass option fools no one. And 54. Luke McDonald on the tackles. This came straight up the gut. And that's a loss of about. The sack would be about a loss of three. Uh, well, two out of three. So maybe, uh, maybe loss of two, and we'll call it second and 12. Wolverines get right back up there. That's Jake Paff barking out signals. Another high snap. And again, it, nice. it's knocked down by McDonald, but the high snap is, is killing their timing. You know, if he gets that ball lower, he can get rid of that ball. But uh, until yeah. they get that fixed, it looks like they're going to have a few problems. Maybe the kid plays outfield in baseball. Either he's that not, or he's yeah, not could, an infielder. Could be a new snapper. He could be uh, you know, your last one. Maybe, maybe he's your uh, punter snapper. And yeah. He's filling in. Okay, so third and 12 from the 18-yard line. Another one over this one almost get over his head. And he just heaves it down and out of bounds. So he was intended for number one, Mark James with uh, Pereira on the coverage, but right now the Wolverine's offense is all about bad snaps. Yeah. So that'll bring up fourth and twelve and Hey, what do you do? Move your quarterback back four yards? No, I can't do that. <laughs> you kind of the purpose. You get a new center. Yeah. So it looks like number eight, Connor Denali, is uh What's is that, kicking. That? And he gets one up into the wind again, and it's going to drop in front of it. But then it checks up again and comes back, and they're living dangerously with the Hillers going to be taking over. First and 10 at the 44-yard line, 6.27 to go in the first quarter. I tell you, you know, these Friday afternoons are terrible, but, man, what, what a beautiful day it is out there. <laughs> it is nice out there. You, know, this sure. is, this is, you can't ask for a better football day. No, you're right. Okay. Let's hope in about a two, two, uh, another month and a half or – we still have a chance for next week to go back to Friday night. Well, that doesn't help me at all. I know. That's right. Saturday's better for you? Saturday's better for me next week. But uh, what about Danny Don? Eh, we'll have to see. I think Friday's oh, better Danny, for him. Yeah, Friday's better for him. Uh, so we have... Uh, you know, I can't play favorites and say which one I'd rather have. Here. I know, I know, I know. And Mulvaney takes the handoff and he met right away. Uh, tries to get out, feet. but he's just right to the line of scrimmage. If he got yeah. back to the line of scrimmage, lost him one. Yeah. Just to, to note, uh, just so everybody knows, Don Lehman is much better. He's feeling better. He is feeling great. He's up Looking and about. Great. He had a commitment today that he couldn't make this afternoon. So um, it's not as if he's still hung up and, and not progressing. Yeah, yeah. This this just kills a working man's schedule. So, you know, he's that that's exactly what it is. All right. So we have uh, Bernard in the shotgun. He's he's throwing. So he's got number eleven down the sideline, and it's in and out of the hands of Tommy Bernard and uh, number seven on the coverage being Dan Dylan Mahoney, and that was right in his hands. And right in his hands. It looks like he just tried to make an adjustment on the ball, and he just bobbled. That's going to be a discussion at the dinner table tonight, I'm sure. Yeah, you bet. Here it comes. Yeah, he laid it right out there again. He had him by a step and. So that brings up third and 11 from the 45-yard line, a 46-yard line. 46, yeah. Call it. Call it. Mulvaney to the right, wing right, two receivers to the right, and a lone receiver to the left. Looks like Bernard. And the run pass option straight up to Mulvaney. He breaks through, and he's going to get the first down. Well, he's going to be close to the first down. He's got the first down. 
So on a nice 11-yard run, Mulvaney picks up the first down. And they're going to be at the 34-yard line of the Wolverines. 5.26 to go in the quarter. Same play, just run it, and he gets turned back inside. Doesn't get nearly as many yards. Yeah. Probably four yards on the carry. Well, maybe three yards on the carry. We'll call it second and eight. Bernardin looks left. He's got Salyards out here, and it's going to be pretty close to being interference. A lot of yeah, a lot of hand flailing. Flailing. Yeah, a lot of hand flail, uh, fla flailing. Uh, flailing. Flailing. That was flailing. the word I'm looking Get for. Get it out. <laughs> a lot of hand flailing going on. And they hustle right back up to the line, third well, and he eight. He did his job. He did keep his hands up. And as I'm watching the replay, he just didn't get his hand in there. Nope. All right, Bernard and barking out signals. Three receivers to the left. Mulvaney to his right. Westwood's all up. They don't have a down lineman. Nope. And the option, and that doesn't work very well. As number, oh, it's going to be a face mask on the play. Yep. Number 25, Christian Harris came up to make the tackle, but I think he grabbed his face mask. I think you're right. And you know, we got to. I'm going to open up this window. Yeah, go ahead. You I'm, I'm, get, I'm getting too much of a glare through the window. And as long as we have no wind, we'll. Yeah, you got it right. Oh, uh, I saw a face mask, but maybe it's just contact with the face mask. It's a five yard. I yeah, so that's I wasn't uh, aware fault. of that rule. Okay, so it's only five yards. Yeah, I watched, watched the replay. He just hit him in the face. Yeah. Years ago, they would have just let that go unless you're grabbing it. Yeah. All right, that brings up third and it must be a spot foul because he didn't get. Um, so it's about third and seven. So the Hill has got a second chance at third down. Three receivers to the left. Mulvaney to the right. And he's back to pass. And he's looking, he's looking, he fakes, he fakes. He comes back to the middle, and it's almost picked off by Dylan Mahoney. And it looks like Salyards was the intended receiver. Mahoney's all over the place. Yeah, he is. Fourth and, going to be fourth and eight. They're going to go for this, I think. Oh, yeah. Why not? Could try, a, minutes left? Could try a pooch. Could do a little pooch, but he's got backfield by himself. Spread out. Salyard's in motion. And... Time out. A flag. Something going on. Too many men on the I field. I think he's counting 12 guys on the field. Three, six, nine, and I think I saw 12. Let's see right here. What do we got? There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Westwood's giving Hopkins every chance to get back into this yeah. with the first down. Glad they went for it. And you got two backs now. Oh, jeez. Oh, my <laughs> God. Yeah, he giveth, they taketh <laughs> away. <laughs> Mulvaney was split. He came back in. They had a two-back set. Saparosis was the big back. Looked like they might have been trying to pound it up. So now we go back to fourth and seven. And Mulvaney to the left. Looks like Saparosis on the wing left. Oh, more whistles. Oh, jeez. Uh, 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 uh. Mike, we're not even going to get out of the first quarter by 4 o'clock the way this is going. Wow. 3.51 to go in the first quarter. Incomplete passes and penalties. Are Lions and Tigers and Bears. Or Hillers and Wolverines, as they say. On a nice Friday afternoon. So well, I, we, we've seen a lot of it. We've seen the, 
the uh, lucky bounces for the Hills. We've seen all the high stabs for the Wolverines. Yeah. <laughs> and all. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Bernard fakes the handoff, rolls left, rolls left, and he's going for Keefe, and he's going for Keefe, and he overthrows him. And that'll, that'll first the, force the turnover on downs. And the Wolverines, we didn't know the flag on the play, though. It's busted everywhere. Uh, and it's against the Wolverines, too. And the coach is not happy with the, is, the way he was taken down. He was not happy. And we're going to do this again. So, huh. the coach, Brad Pindell, not too happy about what he's seen over there. Not at all. So, I'm not. Is that four plays in a row? Oh, it's a big 10. It's a 10 yard penalty, but it's a spot foul, so it'll be fourth and can you see the line? Fourth and one? Well, he hasn't moved the marker yet. Fourth and six. Oh, they're moving it down right now. Fourth and two. I'll call it, fall, long I'll call two. it fourth and yeah, long two, short three. Two and a half. Mulvaney to the left. You oh, jeez, got you've got to be kidding, kidding me. me. Enough of this. Wow. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's uh, 341 remaining in this first quarter. <laughs> Not the first half, the first quarter. <laughs> Holy cow. I don't know if I've seen quite as many. Uh... You know what? I thought I was doing a field hockey game. There were so many whistles. Yeah. Oh, well. I see one going on on the other side of the yeah. field. That's, the, the field looks good over there. Yeah, that, they only have three three minutes left in the uh, half. Yeah, they still. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know it, if that's a running clock, but. Um, stops for goals. Anyway, it's fourth and seven. Does that sound familiar? Yeah. All right. And Bernard and get Mulvaney to the left. and Two receivers to the left, two receivers to the right. And fakes the flare. And he's got down the field, and it's yeah, overthrown. And amazingly, no flag thrown on the play, and it will be a uh, turnover on downs. Bernardin was looking for Max Lakasha, but just overthrew him. All right. All right, so. Yeah, this is uh, unfortunate, unfortunate of, uh, uh, events happening here. Very strange, very, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what to say either. I, the, the type of calls, one after another. Yeah. That was, we had the four five, uh, five offsides in, in, the, in five uh, plays. Sure. All right, so Wolverines will take over on their own 40-yard line after all that. Paff gets a, a, a nice a nice snap, hands off to 34. Colin Fay. And that short gain, it, the defense has really been able to control a lot of the line of scrimmage. There hasn't been a lot of long runs, and there nope. certainly hasn't been a lot of time, although the snap's factoring into it for him to pass. Two backs split behind Paff. And that's over his head. It was going to happen eventually. And he just, oh, he, he, I don't know if he got And it's it. going green. Looks like it's going green. Nope. No, it's not. It's Westwood's ball. Wow. Yeah, they don't want to let go. Why is the whistle blowing? You tell let go. I'm guessing it's, it's Paff and, and Tommy Hamblett getting after it. But that snap, it was bound to happen. He's been flirting with the high snap. And the quarterback looks like he may have hurt his arm a little bit. He's holding his nose. Oh, that's out. the other thing, too, is you're going to get injured. So uh, we'll call it third and, well, it's a long way. I can't count that high. Fourth and 
You got to get third into CVS to get the goal. <laughs> third in CVS. And that was right, Tom. Right yeah. the chest. Oh, he oh! Gets, no, he gets out of it. I don't know he's who he's down, he's down at about the two-yard line inside the five. 22? 25. 25 is Zach Levy on the sack. It's going to be fourth and still CVS to go. Maybe even longer. Maybe Hawking and Drug. As Paff gets out of it, and then he gets sacked. He get out of the original. Uh, Dylan Mahoney going to kick from his the middle of the back end of his end zone. The only good thing about that sack is the clock keeps running. Yes, that was very nice. So it's 1.37 to go in the quarter. You might actually get to do that uh, little announcement a, there. A very nice kick. It drives back Keefe, and he fear catches it at the 40-yard line. So we'll start this all over again. And as we have a break in the action, HCAM Sports is supported by our viewers and by the dentist at Hopkinton. Founded by Dr. Jill Tanzi in 2003, the dentist at Hopkinton provides state-of-the-art dental care in a comfortable and relaxing setting to patients of all ages. They are located at 77 Main Street and online at hopdent.com. Nicely done. So the Hillers will... Uh, Take over at the 40-yard line, heading in on the westward side. And a quick fake and a throw. And he's got Bernard on, the, on a quick slant. And Tommy Bernard just takes it the rest of the way. He beat number eight, Connor Denali. Uh, it was just a quick hitch right into the middle of the field. Took a quick slant. As he's, he's on the numbers. He lines up on the numbers, and he just drives his guy inward. Brother Rory hits Damn. him right in the numbers and he takes Damn. it to the house for a 6 nothing lead. That was great. 40 yard pass. Bernardin to Bernardin. Tommy, Tommy, Robbie Bernardin with the point after. The snap is good. The kick is. Good. So the kick makes it seven to nothing. So with 121 to go in the first quarter as they come back up field, the hill is seven nothing. That was just a quick slant, Mike. Yeah, you know, nice little uh, turnover like that. Nice little uh, like the, the mistakes. The mistakes seem to be making all the action happen. So we can finish that little ad uh, with the dentist at Hopkinton. The dentist at Hopkinton provides services including comprehensive dental care, same day crowns, facial aesthetics, periodontal care, cosmetic dentistry, and implant dentistry. Again, located at 77 Main Street and online at Hopdent. Hopdent.com. And as your cheerleaders taking their traditional push ups for every touchdown scored. I don't know if this uh, offense has been as prolific as some of the past uh, where the cheerleaders stopped somewhere around halftime. Yeah, it was like 50-something. <laughs> they, yeah, they said, all right, we're uh, done. I've had enough of that. <laughs> so kicking off of the hill is, did we ever figure out who number nine was? Ethan Champlin. Ethan Champlin is the kick. He must have forgot his jersey somewhere along the way. That's usually the way. That's usually a pretty embarrassing moment when you have to tell the coach that. Yeah, especially on an away game. And he just pooches it. And the up back just, oh, and he almost fumbled the ball. Mark James just came sideways instead of just turning it up. It didn't gain much. Nope. But they'll start around the 30-yard line. Ethan Champlain normally wearing number 52, so you could see the confusion. Right. As he, Coach probably told him to go, go reach in the bin and find a find a number. I mean, get make sure it's a green one. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's probably a JV shirt, probably you know. <laughs> no, that's that's this year's. All right, so the Wolverines take over at the their own 30-yard line. Really has been uh, tough sledding for them, and a good snap. And he just throws it to, and number one breaks up into the middle of the field, breaks across the field, and he gets into the hill of territory at the 48-yard line. Mark James That's from so PATH, and he was tackled by, I, I didn't number see who six. made the tackle. 
six. Keith, Keith on the tackle. Keith on the tackle. So as you might, as you can see, the timing. He didn't have to go reach for the ball. He got it and threw it. Got it and threw it. They still have that jump when they catch it. Yeah. They even no matter where it is, right in his chest. Right in his chest, he's, he's still got the jump. Up. So path Let's see with. If we can see it to happen here. Path with Faye behind him and the and he fakes it a run pass option, and he's going to pick up about five yards. You know, Tommy Hamblett was coming down to crash, and he got blocked by his own guy, number yeah. 54, Luke McDonald, and it allowed uh, Paff to turn it up on the right side to pick up about four on the play. And I think they're going to let it run the quarter. If they're going to throw the ball, they might as well throw with whatever wind they have. They might as well throw that way. Yeah, you would think. And they are going to let it run. And they're going to let it run down. So that will bring us to the end of the first quarter. And the quarter just comes to an end now. And the hill is up 7 nothing. as they regroup. And we'd like to thank John Ritz Good. up on the camera today. It's not quite as nice as it was last time, but not a bad day. Yeah, yeah, he likes it up there. He, he likes the bad weather. He likes the bad He, he and likes, Bob Hamilton like the bad yeah, weather. Yeah, uh, Bob, he likes to complain about the bad weather. <laughs> but he, uh, John really, he, he dresses for everything. John's the outdoorsy guy. He does, you know, he's on the Trails Club, President of Trails yeah, Club, yeah, and he's... Yeah. Uh, very, very outdoorsy. Uh, I think he kayaks all the way up until December when the water freezes. Well, I so like to see him in December when he brings his turkey hat. We, we turkey in November, game. yeah. We yeah we're home this year. year. Yep. He will be, he'll be donning the turkey hat, I'm sure. He doesn't like to disappoint. So we got Mr. Everything, Mike Tarosian, on the other mic last week. I want to thank Chuck Joseph. Chuck Joseph, how? Stepping in 10 how years out of the booth and coming in. Oh, he. He stepped in like, like he, he didn't, didn't miss, miss a, a beat. He like didn't miss a beat. <laughs> you know, the last time he was in this booth, he had the same volunteers. I, well, I think I, uh, I think I might have taken over him. Mike yeah. Wright uh, it was, it was asked your... me uh, at some point. He said, I, "I think it was Chuck. I can't remember." Yeah, because it was Chuck. It was Chuck and uh, uh, Mike Prate, wasn't it? Uh, well, Mike Prate and before that, uh, Ron Eldridge. Oh, okay. So Pat, and Ron Eldridge did basketball as well. Paff hands off to number five, Shamar Hall, and he breaks it up for about two yards on the tackle, number 70. So a little history. There's Chuck Hayes, Joseph. Pearson Woodruff. It was Chuck Joseph and Ron Eldridge. Uh, Mike Prate took over for Eldridge. You took over for? For Chuck. Chuck. That's my eighth year, Mike. I haven't oh seen a raise goodness. in eight years, though. I, soon? Oh, wait, wait a second. Didn't I double it last year? I thought you might have. Okay. I, I, you might have. Yeah. <laughs> Have to look at those deposit slips. Third down, and they break. Nope, they're not going to break out to the outside. Oh, he fumbles. Hall. Yeah, he he like might he, have been. Yeah, he no? scooped it back in. Well, he might have been stopped, too. Yeah, you know, I, I don't know why they didn't blow the whistle. The, it, he went back two yards. Yeah, forward progress was certainly stopped. Yeah, so they should they should put it back at the at the line of scrimmage. No, but, I guess they're going to no? call it live. It's fourth down. Wow. A loss of three on the play. That that was two yards of pushback, and, and uh, forward motion was stopped. And they're looking to go for this. Yeah, I was going to say that. Yeah. I don't know why they would. They were waiting for them. Or maybe they didn't trust the guy changing the downs marker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's wait to see what happens here. Yeah. All right. Keith and Shelly, it's to receive. The punt is end over end. Fair catch, oh, and yep. they let it drop. And number six recovers it. Burgess for the Wolverines. So they, Hopkinton will set up somewhere around the 10 yard line. 10 29, change possession to go in the half. It looks like uh, they're moving the ball around a little bit now. I like the first quarter. Uh, so it's, they start at the six yard line. It's a good punt. Yeah. And certainly the wind Great does position. play a little bit of a difference. Still blowing in here. It looks like it's a little hotter now. Bernard in the shotgun. Mulvaney to the right. Three to the left, one to the right. Back to pass. Throws that slant again. This time, Hamlet was covered by Mark James and knocked down. That stops the clock at 10.25. Second and 10. Keith comes off. Salyards may be the lone receiver to the right here. 
Bernard and hands off to Mulvaney up the middle, and he's met by, I can't see, number Looks something like nine, 50, 69. 69. 69. JT O'Shea on the tackle, and a, and a, and a big lad he is, and yeah, he is. I'm sure Mulvaney felt that a little bit. So that brings up two yards on, three yards, third and seven from their own, and we'll call it the eight yard line. But Aden gets fakes the handoff and he throws to Hamlet, who's got it. He was way off. Mark James on the coverage. Play Hamlet sure, was yeah. was wide open as he cut that off. James backed up maybe five six yards off when he when he caught it. So that brings up first down and around the 30 yard line for the Hillers. Gets him out of trouble. But Aden hands off to Mulvaney. He comes right. And he runs right into number 52, Liam Dulia. And he get back to the line of scrimmage. And we'll we'll give him the line of scrimmage. We'll give him one. We'll give him one. It looks like they moved the uh, the down marker over a bit. Bernard's got fakes the handoff to Mulvaney, throws, and he's got an open sal uh, Salyards who's driven to the turf as soon as he catches it by number seven, Dylan Mahoney. Should probably have a half. Dylan Mahoney on the tackle for Westwood. So it's third and one from the 39-yard line. Third down and one for Hoffman from the 39. 8.37 to go in the half. Bernard and barking it out. Mulvaney in motion sets and straight up goes Bernardin and I think he got the first yep. down. Just barely over the line of script, uh, over the first down marker. And he does make it. So it's going to be first and 10 from the 42, 41 yard. We'll call it the 41 yard line. Bernard is looking for a call from the coach. He gets it. He throws. He's looking right, looking right. Throws to Lakasha, and Lakasha has it. Nine, Just short. A nine-yard gain. Tackled by. Tackled by Connor Denali or Danielli. Danielli. Uh, uh, I guess it's Danielli. Sorry, parents, for. Yeah. Butchering up some names, yeah. We don't do this on purpose. Yeah. It's second and one from the from midfield. But not with Mulvaney and the pistol behind him. Now he directs him to the right. Two receivers to either side. And he's just going to run it again. And he's going to be stuffed. And initially stuffed up by number 52. 52, Liam Dulia. And, and finished up by 57, Kevin Cote. So... A loss of two on the play, and that'll be third. Brings up third and two. Well, maybe three. Third and three. Now the sun, you don't get this very often in October. No. We're doing these afternoon games, two in a row, where the sun's beating right down in our eyes. Yeah. I mean, the best is our Thanksgiving morning games, oh, sure. but it's to our back. And he fakes a throw, and he comes into the, and it's oh. off the hands of Bernardin. Hit well, him. Fair, no, he was a, just... It kind of just, it hit him. It hit him. Yeah, he's going to give his brother yeah, a hard yeah, time, right? Yeah. I'd like to sit around that. You know, I had an interesting time. My kids were a little too far apart, but occasionally right. played hockey together. This would have been a lot of fun to see this stuff. Yep. Boy, these guys must really give it to each other. <laughs> Renard and the younger to kick. And it's almost blocked. And they're going to kill it. No, he's got a good roll. It's going to roll down to about the 15 yard line. And the ball is picked up by Ethan Champlin at the 15 yard line. So Wolverines will have the ball with 6.26 to go at the 15, their own 15. And we got a flag on the play. And it's. Gonna go where? And we'll get the end. It looks like it's going against the Wolverines. 
Block in the back against Westwood. And that backs him up. I guess it's going to go half the distance to the goal line, so it should be about seven and a half yard line. I get a kick out of these guys. We say it all the time. They they march it off, right? Why don't you just look? Yeah, look and <laughs> just, just go. Look, do the math. Yeah, I mean, I, I can see the five. Yeah, if you want to step it off, I guess it's old school stuff, five. right? Yeah, five of the ten. Yeah, but after that, come on. All right, so it's about the eight yard line. First and ten for the Wolverines. Path. And he hands it off to to Faye, and he picks up about. Well, we'll give him two on the play. So it brings up second and eight. Yeah, we'll call it second. We'll give him three. Second and seven. Path with Faye in the background, uh, in the backfield behind him, and Pistol. They have three receivers to the left. And he's looking left, and he's going to get sacked. sacked. He's going to – no, he gets out of it, but now he's – Balls oh, out. Balls out. And now it's in the hill of favor. And the hillers <laughs> have it. Uh, oh, wait, the other one's going the other way. All uh, right, maybe he didn't. Number 70, Sean Powers came up yeah. with the ball. Injured player. Yeah, we have the Wolverine down. You know, we have uh, the luxury of having Brian Bisconi, Dr. Brian Bisconi, on the field. He's yep. yeah, heading on out. I call him Hawkington's orthopedic surgeon. Yeah, he's, he's pretty, pretty much done every, every knee and shoulder possible in this town. Black trainer, Amanda Major, and hey, the Pat Americks are out there as well. A little bit of everybody. Can't tell me that kid's not in good hands right now. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, as we as we have a little break in the action, and we we hope the young man is doing well. We have some uh, Saporosius leads the team in tackles coming in today. He's got 32 solo, 47 total. He's all over the field from that middle linebacker position. Zach Levy has 20 and 16 assists, five hurries on the quarterback. And Salyad's 11 solo, um, four pass breakups and two interceptions leads in that. Uh, Pereira has six breakups and shows that he can cover. It's number, is it number three? Yep. The, the quarterback, Paff, was hurt, down, and it looks like his arm is, oh, it might be his throwing arm, yep. the way he's holding that yep. arm. Uh, that doesn't bode, that bode well for the Wolverines at all. That is not a good thing. Well, that happens to be one of Pasconi's specialties, the shoulder, so he'll either welcome to the club or give him a clean bill of health. Yep. And when I say welcome to the club, I mean a, a labrum or something like that. Well, that's unfortunate for Paff, but uh, hopefully he does okay here. The Hills take over at about the four-yard line. First and goal. Bernard and hands off to Mulvaney, and he gets a, he's still driving. Probably gets about two or three on the play. And another Hiller, I mean, another Wolverine down. Number 75, Greg Nocrorian. Is that a good Irish name? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and he's, uh, he looks like he's in a little bit of pain, too. Oh, Bisconi just sent a bill to Westwood High School. Is that, is that, is <laughs> is that, that how that works? I don't know how that works. <laughs> I guess that's what you do. I don't oh, this know. is what he does just so he gets the good seats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but he's been doing this for years. For I've years. seen him down here. He's he's done surgery on both my boys. He's, uh, he's been doing this since he moved to town. One shoulder, one knee. Yeah. And, yeah. He's, and he's taking care of mine now, too. So Take care of my oldest. He's good to have around. So it's going to be... It looked like a pickup of, of one, I guess. So it's going to be second and goal from the three. Bernard and hands off to Mulvey. Oh, fumble on the play. And it looks like he might have picked it back up. Ooh. Mulvaney was able to get his hands on it, but somebody busted through from Westwood and knocked it out of his hand. 
just after the the transition happened. So now it's third and goal from the looks like the eight yard line. And it was number eleven that oh, was it? number eleven curtain. And he's looking to throw right, looking to throw right. He throws it hard, and it's broken oh. up. And is for, looks like it was yeah intended for Keefe and James, Mark James on the coverage. So that brings up fourth. This hasn't quite gone the way they intended no, it to go. Um, they've backed up. It's fourth and eight, or fourth and goal from the eight. And Saparosius is in the wing right and three receivers to the right. And he's looking right, looking right, going to throw, and it's picked off. Number 11 picks it off. Rowan Curtin picked it off and returned Jeez. it back to about the, oh, we'll call it the 10-yard line, 11-yard line. Well, that was a very unfortunate well. series of events. That's just not what you expected to have at the... Five four yard line after a turnover and go backwards and throw an interception. This has been a strange game. I'm going to have to say. I this I would concur with that, and to, not to mention we still got four thirty three left to go in the half. Wow, you know what I blame this on? I think it's that uh, partial full moon and it being uh, assistant principal Josh Hannon's birthday today. Oh, all well, that I stuff. I think a lot of that it. has to do with it. So the backup quarterback is Junior Colin Danielli. Is that number eight or number nine? Eight. Oh, he's taller. He can get those high snaps. And it's a run straight up the middle. I think it's Faye. Yeah. Number eight. And he picks up mm, not much. Get back to the original line of scrimmage. Yeah, so call it second and ten. Yep. So it's Connor Danielli as the quarterback. And he's actually listed as a wide receiver. Well, at least he's tall enough for these snaps. Oh, oh it's even over his head. Maybe not. There you go. <laughs> a, a high snap and... Wow. And 28? It's 28 or 29? Eric Davis. Eric Davis with the tackle. Wow. There it is. And he saves a, a safety, possibly a touchdown. Uh, going up to getting that. That's going to be third and 19 now from about the three yard, four yard line. And Brian Hurd has got him cranking up a little ACDC to pump up the fans. Rock it out of the press box. He's having a conversation. The back judge is having a conversation with the Westwood coach. I think he's going he's to. The Westwood coach has been talking to yeah, every referee well, at this game. He was waiting for the clock oh, to run clock out. Oh, clock to time yeah, out. Yeah, he yeah. wanted to time it. Oh, yeah, so he used up his... What's that, his first or second time out? <laughs> so when you're behind, you don't want time on the clock? Is that it? Is that how that works? No, I think he wanted to get something changed, and he just decided to let it go to the end. Huh. I mean, he's got a, a third and forever here, and he might as well take as much clock off for the Hillers because they're going to get good field position. One for a dollar and two for two dollars. <laughs> Jay Golden on the public address here and keeping the folks entertained and informed. And, and it looks like he's getting it a little bit from Mr. Game Day coordinator Scotty Mackin down there. And he's, uh, he's really letting them have it with the uh, the visual and the pointing and whatnot. So I think there's going to be a little something. He might be meeting you in the parking lot after the game. Halftime show. Halftime Half show. Coach Golden and, and Scotty Mackin are going to get into it probably at halftime. So maybe you might want to come on down if you have you know, a chance. I'm, I'm going to stay streaming just for the people that are away. <laughs> <laughs> now I want nachos for some reason. Yeah, well, nothing wrong with that. Third and, third and 19. Wolverine's looking to throw. He's in the end zone. He, and he, oh! oh hit. And it's picked off by. It was picked off and wow. returned for a touchdown by. I can't see the number. I know there's Hold a on, four. Let's see if I can get it here. A 34, Saparosius. That ball was thrown right to him while he was hit. Watch. what He, he got hit. Danielli steps in to throw yeah. deep and he gets hit and it's caught by 
by Saperosius, and he gets into the end zone. That ball was intended the way he was throwing to go deep, oh. and he got hit, and it just landed. Well, I wouldn't say landed. It was thrown pretty hard, actually. It was a good catch by Saperosius to get it. So at, at 3.03 in the, in the second quarter, we've got a timeout now, Hawkington. At 3.03 of the second, Saperosius with a four yard TD interception. Interception return. Well, if the last five minutes of the game <laughs> haven't been kind of weird, I don't the know. The whole game I, has I, been I, weird. I don't know what to tell you, to be this, honest with you. This whole game has been weird. Now the quarterback, the new quarterback, Connor Danielli, was looking to go down the right sideline deep. And I didn't see who made the pressure, did you? I could have tell. It could have been Hamlet off the right side. I'm not exactly sure, but. And now it's a extra point attempt. Snap is good. And the ball is through. And it's Bernardin with the extra point. So as they come up field, 3-0-3, the Hillers lead 14 to nothing. And with Westwood's quarterback starter, Jake Paff, out. Looks like he's going to be out. I see him. I think that's him right across at the 45-yard line with pads off and ice on. Uh, does not look good, and you hope the future looks okay for that young yeah, man. Yeah, let's just hope. Let's just hope he gets the rest for the weekend. Yeah, the senior quarterback for the Wolverines is out of the game, and that's tough as a senior. You want to, oh you, you want to go yeah. out, you want to play, you want to get through the season anyway, and that's unfortunate. That's, that's that's why you play. That's why you play your whole career is for your senior year. That's right. That's right. So these two teams. Division four South Westwood ranked right now at number five at two and three, and the Hawkington Hill is ranked number nine at one and four. Um, and there's only seven games played to determine the playoffs, so any chance of getting into the playoffs, I think that we'll, uh, the the Hillers need to win this game. Chaplin on the kick, or Champlin, and he another squibber that takes a hop and number five. For the Wolverines, gets to the right corner. He goes up the sideline. He breaks a tackle, and he goes out at about it's the Hoffington 35-yard line. Number five, Shamar, Shamar Hall. Don, I mean Don. I just said Don. Don, Don. Yeah. Don, Don. <laughs> Where's Don? Where's Don? Mike, he just picked that ball up, went along the right side, yeah, and, and brought it all the way down to the 35-yard. Oh, no, we'll call it the 38-yard line. He must have stepped out of bounds a little earlier than that. And with 2.54 to go, that's a good break for the Wolverines. Hopping in defense, looking to stiffen up here so they can't go any further. Great. Daniele in the shotgun. They looks like they don't modify their – they don't modify their um, play at all, their formations at all. They may not throw as much with this young man as a quarterback. Daniele is a junior. I said listen with the wide receiver, but he seems to throw pretty well. And he hits number seven, Dylan Mahoney, and a quick slant gets about 15. It brings it down to about the 24-yard line. And I'll pick up first and 10, 250 to go in the in the half. And Yelly looking to throw, and he's going to get Hamlet's got him again, and he and that's intentional grounding as far as I'm concerned. But I guess not. I guess not. Tommy Hamlet came from the it, corner and just got a hold of him and kept him from being able to get that pass off. You think they decided just to stop throwing the mustard down and get through this game? <laughs> no, I don't. I think this kid's going to throw. I, I don't think they change anything. He threw a right. pretty good ball to to Mahoney earlier. You know, you got to remember these guys that catch the ball are <laughs> usually a pretty good thrower too. They, they can be. A phase behind him. And he's going to throw again a quick little funnel pass. Oh, and yeah. he's driven by Saparosius. Mark James picked up about two before Saparosius just grabbed him and brought him backwards. 
That brings up, we'll call it, yeah, we'll call it eight, third and eight. Third and eight looks good. Third and eight from the 23 yard line. 2.34 to go. Daniele gets a snap. He's looking left and he's gonna roll. He's gonna roll. There's a flag on the play already. Oh, and he takes a hit by Saparosius as he got rid of the ball. He had to set his shoulders and he wasn't able to do that. But there's a flag on the play. And we got defensive offsides. I see his hands on his hips. I don't know if he's just standing like that. <laughs> Yeah, it's on it's on the Wolverines. Personal foul. Oh, I'm sorry, not on the, on the Wolverines. It's on the Hillers. Personal foul face mask. It's a good face mask call going against the Hillers. Coach isn't too happy about that. Well, most not. <laughs> so that brings it all the way down to about the 10-yard line, is it, is it a goal yeah. situation? It, no, it's no. Uh, that's a 20. What no, it he's at? at the 10. He's right around the 10-yard line, but he's oh, stretched out just see. by the goal line. So it's just short of the 10. Theoretically, they can get a first down. Fave, straight up the middle. And he probably got a few yards anyway. Now you got, now you got, oh, uh, see the goal line and the pylons are in different locations over there. Well, it's, that's it's what's throwing me off. It's behind it, too. Oh, okay. Yeah. But over here, it looks a lot closer to the 10 than it You're does right. the goal line. You're score. right. So we'll call it second and seven. 145 to go in a half. This has turned into an interesting finale here. Daniele back to pass. He's looking, he's looking, he's looking. He holds, he throws, and it's off, off to, looks like number two, Sean Gallagher, the intended receiver. And it was just a little too... Too wide for him to catch. For those of you watching on YouTube, uh, you come back at 6.30. We'll be streaming the uh, Hill of Volleyball game. Hill is taking on... I don't know. Millis. There you go. Smallest school in the TVL. Yep. Largest school taking on the smallest school, right? I believe Hopkins is not the largest, largest school in the TVL. Do you ever think that would ever happen? Uh, not in my time. <laughs> Daniele throws, and he goes to the corner of the end zone, yep. well overthrown, intended yeah. for number seven, Mahoney. And that's going to bring up fourth and about, we'll call it fourth and seven from the, from the uh, it looks like it, the, the way the yard marker is, it looks like it's, a, it's ten, uh, five yards forward, but he's, he's really at the nine yard line. And it started around the 13. We're not high enough. We're only we're at the at the fans level in the back of the stands. The the camera folks are yeah, one level up. Yeah. So they those of you viewing wondering why we have no idea where the field or the markers being set. It's because we're too low. And a timeout by the Wolverines. 127 to go. This is an interesting play. Like theoretically, they can get the first down. They just have to be inside, it looks like, the two-yard line. So do we do a five-second station identification? This well, is, you are, you this are. is HCAM TV. This is HCAM Television. Hawkins, Massachusetts. We're on, we're on HCAM Ed Station here. we got the cheerleaders doing their little stunts out front as you're looking on the screen right now. There we go. <laughs> And she stuck it with the wind blowing. Uh, you know, you, you wonder, <laughs> these kids are pretty small, some of them. <laughs> that wind gets strong enough to blow right. them over a little bit. But uh, you can mention our sponsor again. Oh, we have, this uh, time. we have HCAM Sports. It's sponsored by our viewers and by the dentist at Hopkinton, founded by Jill Tanzi in 2003. The dentist at Hopkinton provides state-of-the-art dental care in a comfortable and relaxing setting to patients of all ages. They are located at 77 Main Street. So we have fourth down, Daniele. He's back to pass, he throws right, and it's too low, too low, and he's looking for more for a first down than a touchdown. Salyard's on the coverage. 
and the Hillers will take over on, on downs at about the, the nine, eight, nine yard line with 121 to go in the half. Nothing wrong with that. Nope. They kept them out of the end zone, which is really the name of the game, right? So it'll be interesting to see. They have they have some timeouts, the Hillers, and a quarterback that can throw. And let's see if they sit on this or let it go. And Mulvaney tries to go up the middle, but he gets nothing. Nothing. He, in fact, he probably lost the yard. And it's going to be second and about, no, he lost more than one. About three yards on the play. So it'll bring up second and 13 from about the five. He certainly don't want to turn the ball over here. But he took out the big blocking guy, Saparocious. And they got the little speedy guys out there. And they're not even that little, but. Uh, yeah. That's, you're talking in comparison. Yeah. And Bernard is just going to take it straight up the, the gut, and he gets nowhere. And a host of Wolverines on the tackle, led by 75, Greg Necronian. Necrorian. Necrorian. You got to learn how to pronounce these Armenian names. Yeah. It's, it's one little syllable at a time. It's usually two <laughs> letters. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> hey, I'm I'll doing the you. best I can, man. They, you know, it would be nice if they had phonetic spelling with it. Neck Rorian. Neck Rorian. Neck Rorian. That was close, right? That's it. Rorian. You know, so, all you got to do is say it twice slow, and then you're an expert. Yeah, until, <laughs> until the next time comes around, and I, I, uh, I, I just butcher it up again. But that's all right. That's okay. You get what you pay for in life, right? Yes, you do. There's nothing wrong with that. Yes, you do. And Don Lehman said we do get what we paid for. We uh, do get what we get what paid we spend, for, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You get I, I tell you, it's, it's funny. I actually found one of your fans that were talking to me. One, of, one of our fans. One of your fans. You found the fan? Yeah, one, one of the fans. I, I was met him at Price Chopper, and he says, you know what? He says, I got to try this just once because he was always told never watch the replays with the volume up. So one time he did, he said you actually sounded pretty good. We sounded pretty good, didn't yeah. we? All right. Yeah. Okay. Well, that sounds like a vote of confidence, doesn't it? I'd like to like a shout out to all our fans down in Bonstable, the Bonst Bonstable volleyball team and all their fans. They love H Cam. They watch us all the time so they can keep an eye on our Hiller girls. There you go. So they know how to play them in the playoffs. Yeah, Bonstable, those two have been going at it for a while. Oh, a few past years now. Four years now, yeah. All right, so it's a third and about thirteen. And we have a different quarterback. Saliage, yeah. it looks like it's like a wildcat thing going on here. Saliage was set up in the as a quarterback, and Wolverine saw that, probably haven't prepared for it much, and just wanted to make sure they – what's going on there, so – So, 35 seconds remaining. And in this game, that could be another 15 <laughs> minutes in real time. Well, let's look what we're talking about. We started around 3.30. It's been an hour and 10 knows. minutes for the first half. Hour and 10 minutes. That is a whole volleyball game. Yep. So, the Hills trot back out, and they're going to keep the... <laughs> they're going to keep the same... Nope, Bernardin comes back in. Uh, he does. Good. Oh, so maybe they had some wildcat thing. I, I'd be surprised at this point if he's going to throw, but you never know. And he hands it off to Saparocious, and he just pounds up the middle for no gain. Keeping it safe. And fourth down. I wonder if the Wolverines will take a timeout. Oh, oh we yeah. got an injury timeout. Way away from the play. We didn't see it. Mark James is down. Oh. He might have tripped over a sprinkler head out there or something. Uh, they, it was, oh, you know what? It looks, like looks like a cramp. Looks like a cramp. They got his foot up in the air and bending his toe. And oh, so we got a little time out there. I tell you, got to hand it to the the medical uh, 
<laughs> experts that are around a football game today compared to us where we either had a rub dirt on it. Yeah. Just go sit on the bench. We'll talk to you yeah. later. Yeah. Go sit over there and we'll see how you're feeling. Yep. Walk it off. That was my favorite one. Walk it off. Walk it off. Yep. Is that bone supposed to be sticking out like that? Just walk it off. <laughs> Coach, I'm thirsty. Water yeah. makes you weak. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. Whatever well, it we've, takes. We've learned a few things over the years. Absolutely. Okay, so it's four, and that's just going to run out the clock. I, maybe they don't have any timeouts. I would have at least made them punt it, right? Yeah. So they must have run out of timeouts. Let the clock run out. And that'll do it for the first half. The clock runs down to three zeros, and the Hillers will go into the locker room leading 14 to nothing. Don't go away. We'll be right back for the second half.
All right, we're back for the second half, filler fans, and uh, we got game day coordinator up here on the in the booth, Scotty Mackin. Scotty, how are we doing today? All right, he's doing great, and I want to thank him. He brought up some uh, Reese's Cups for uh, Mike and I, and I'm sure we'll enjoy those as the second half uh, continues. That's the one Coach Golden told me he did go for the special. Oh, you, oh yeah, they're normally one for $1, but he went for two for $2. Oh, you, you went with the special, two for $2. There you nice, what a guy. Nice. That's the way to keep the business going over there, right? Yeah. How's this game going, Scotty? Did we prepare well for this game? Looks like it's going in the right direction. Yeah. Okay, all right. So how uh, the cheerleaders getting a little workout today too? Did I see you doing some uh, some push-ups down there as well? No, I didn't think so. I thought maybe that was you, but maybe it was somebody no, else. I, I I think he was picking up a piece of trash and throwing it. Oh, maybe that yeah, was it. Yeah. So let's um. It's like a crunch. Let's get a little recap of the half here. As uh, as Scotty said, we had a at 121 in the or 121 left in the first. Uh, we had Bernard to Bernard and with the. Oh, I don't know how many yards. I think it was a 40-yard touchdown yeah, pass. Yeah, somewhere around 40. Uh, to Bernardin to Bernardin. Uh, the kick by Bernardin made it 7 to nothing. Yep. And then we had a 303 left in the second. We had Saparosius with an interception return, four yards. And with the kick by Bernardin, that made it 14 to nothing. But a very strange game, very long game. Uh, but as long as the Hillers are up 14 to nothing, you know, maybe we can yeah. get the, the roll going. Yeah. Uh, Looking at the official running time, that was an hour and ten minutes of a half. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's that, like I said, that's a whole volleyball game. That is, uh, that's almost a soccer game. <laughs> you know. And well, it's at least it's early on Friday. We'll probably get out at the at the same time. <laughs> We'd like to thank Scotty Mack, and he's going to uh, be getting down to the field right now to help out Coach Mack. And uh, good to see us. We'll see you maybe next week. All right. See you next Saturday. We'll see you next Saturday. We'll see see you. Saturday. Or Friday. Hopefully yeah, Friday. Yeah, yeah. We don't know. We don't know yet. It's uh, it's still up right now as of today, as of this moment, this broadcast. Saturday at 2 o'clock. Saturday at right? 2 o'clock against Alston. Okay. All right. The it's sun now up. is at a, at a very tough angle, and I this, didn't bring my sunglasses. And This is going to be hash. We've been doing the soccer and field hockey games. On uh, the visitors' bleachers, looking over the new turf fields, and this is the time of day that it happens, and it is just killer. John Ritz is uh, going to be on his A game for this. Yeah. So the backup quarterback, who's now the starter, Connor Daniele, is kicking off to Mulvaney and Salyards deep, and he oh uh, whistle on the play, and it's off. Well, that's weird. A whistle? Yeah. Is a whistle on the play? Yes. He might have got a new whistle or ref over there. I don't yeah. know. He's got to see if it still works. Yeah. I, I saw him down at the end zone um, on the bench there changing corks. He wore out <laughs> he wore out the cork in the first whistle. They still make cork in those or are they I plastic? Think so. I don't no, know. I, I, I think they don't have anything in them anymore. Oh, there's something they, in there. I don't think there's anything there in there anymore. There used to be a cork. Well, to make it whistle, there has to be something in there. Uh, no? No, it's just. It's oh. just oh. <laughs> I think we all remember those things in the whistle. <laughs> and another squib kick, and it's picked up by an up man, and he's skirting a few tackles, gets out to about the 48-yard line of the Hillers. Oof. And it is... It is bright. It is Tommy Bernardin on the return. Yep. All right, so they start at their own... We'll call it the... We'll call it the... 48? No, he's going to. It looks like 49. At the, uh, not quite at the 40. We'll call it the 48. It's just short of the 49. 48.25? Something like yeah, that. Yeah, we'll do that. And Bernard in the shotgun. Mulvaney to his right, two receivers each side. Back to throw. Back to throw. He's, he lifts it up. He's got Hamlet out there. Hamlet oh. tries to make the one handed catch, cannot. And it's incomplete. He threw it. Tom, uh, Tommy Hamblett was heading almost to a post and it was thrown to a flag and he just couldn't get his body around to catch it. So the incomplete pass, second and 10. Bernardin in the shotgun, Mulvaney to the right. He looks left, looks left, throws, 
And he's got Salyards at about the 45 yard line of the Wolverines, but four yards short of the first, bring up about third and four. Third down and four for the Hillers. Right at the 45 yard line of Westwood. And the Hillers huddling up now, calling their plays. Often they will get right up to the line of scrimmage. Nod and back to pass. I think it's defensive offside. He throws. Nice play intended for Salyards and broken up by Mahoney. And, but there was a flag in the play. I'm guessing it's defensive offside the way it was thrown. No, it's not against the Hillers. The Hillers? <laughs> Illegal shift. Now, procedure. And I can hear Coach McLean all the way up here yelling, punt, 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 yeah, punt. Yeah, this got, got declined. So it was a penalty on the Hillers. It's possible they didn't have enough guys in the line of scrimmage. Tight end's got to be covered. Any number of things. It was an alignment thing because the whistle wasn't blown for procedure. So Tommy Bernardin will punt with the win to Mahoney. And it's going to, oh, it oh. should have been blocked. I don't know how it wasn't blocked. <laughs> and a great kick. And it went off the hit, uh, went off the, the Wolverine, yeah. but it was recovered by the Wolverine. Number 21, Shay. Right away from it. Shay Lanyane was trying to uh, make a block, and it hit him. And the Mahoney was able to come up and get it. But I don't know how Grady Mahoney did not block that punt. He didn't, he jumped up versus out because uh, he was there. I don't know if we have the replay. Uh, we missed the replay. Yeah. So on the on the punt, the Wolverines recover the fumble, technically a fumble at the eight yard line. And I'm trying to get a look at this replay. Uh, that's the play before. Oh, huh. sorry. Yeah, I don't know if we'll have time to take a look. Oh, that's well before. Yeah. It's going now, but. So Daniele will have the Wolverines lined up. He's got three receivers to his right, and he throws, and he throws into the ground to Mahoney. Lakasha, we'll give Lakasha on the coverage. So second and 10 from the eight yard line, 10.41 to go in the third. Then Yelly hands off to Faye, and he minimal gain. Stuffed right up, looked like 54. Luke McDonald was on the tackle. I tell you what, if these Wolverines get any kind of rhythm, I bet you they run a lot of plays, man. They can. They can turn them around. They can get going in a hurry. Same formation. Daniele. Oh, he saw, <laughs> he saw Mulvaney coming. Yep. It was a bit of a screen. And Faye straight up, but there's a flag on the play. He's got enough for the first. And an another, another flag. flag. He certainly got the first down. A bit of a screen. So last one might be an unsportsman. Uh, he's... I got the glare here. I can't really tell. He's talking to the Wolverine side. Two flags. And they're having a discussion. And it's going to be against the Wolverines. Let's see what the White Hat says. Block from the back. Uh, I didn't see the play that block in the back. Now set back inside their own five yard line to third and 13. Third and 15. So we'll replay it. It'll be third and about 12. 
from about the six yard line. And the hill has changed. And it's gonna be a short pass, but it's a wobbly pass. It doesn't even get to the intended receiver, yeah. Mahoney. And that'll bring up fourth and about 12 from their own six yard line, and that'll force a punt. Uh, maybe it's the eight yard line, closer to 10. 9.41 to go in the third quarter, and I haven't seen a whole lot of offense yet. A lot of incomplete passes, a lot of stops at the clock. Tons of stops. And Illy now, the jack of all trades, is kicking. And another flag, another whistle. And offsides. And this is getting a little ridiculous. This is a tough game to call. It must be frustrating to watch as a parent. <laughs> And now Danielli's on the back of his end zone. Good snap. And it's a tough kick into the wind. It's just going to hang. And fair catch by Salyards and a lot of traffic. That was an interesting catch in there. Yeah. But he had room to do it. So it was 9.28 to go in the third. That was about a... 25-yard kick. They'll start at the 30, it looks like. About the 30, just inside mm -hmm. the 30. So a short field for the Hillers. Tried to look to add on to a 14 to nothing <laughs> lead. And a handoff till Mulvaney, and he breaks through the middle and picks up about, I'll say he picks up eight or nine yards on the carry, just straight up the middle, running hard. It took four Wolverines to take him down. Mark James finishing up on the tackle, but a few Wolverines were pulling him from behind. Bernard in the shotgun, and Mulvaney to the right, getting the play from the coach. Oh, yeah. and another flag. <laughs> and got to be a pre snap on the Hillers. Procedure. Five yard penalty, and it's going to be second and about six. Bernard, kind of a tight formation. Fakes the handoff, and he throws down the left sideline to open. his brother, and... Oh. Oh. I think the reason for the no, the no flag is that... He, he was going for the ball? Well, he was kind of going for the ball, but it was so far underthrown. Yeah. Um, uh, he got there a little early, but... Yep. You know, we, can, we can watch this here. No, did we lose it? I just watched it again. Oh, you did? Yeah, was it a little? Uh, no, it was. You, it was called right. It was called right. Okay, so that brings up third and six, and we'll call it from the twenty-five yard line. And Bernard looks left, looks right away, throws to Sally. It's nobody's on him, and it's going to be a flag, flag on the play. It's holding back here. And he's out of bounds at around the 15-yard line. But the back judge threw that a long way. I think we got holding him over here. On the block? Yep. Uh, <laughs> every other play is a, is a flag. And it is on the Hillers. Oh, pass interference. Oh, pass interference. Wow. Uh, you know what? He might have been trying to block before the, uh, before oh, the ball, before was, the ball, ball was, was thrown. Yes, yep. Or as the ball was being thrown, he might have been out and had contact. Yeah, it looks like there was I, – I saw because it came in the backfield here. Right. It looked like there was some uh, holding going on. Yeah, he just got to him, he just got to him too early is what it was. From the 
Uh, All right, so now it's third and, uh. third and 21. Uh, we'll call it third and 21. But out and in the shotgun, three receivers to the left. He's back. Here comes the blitz, and he dumps it over the middle, and it's dropped by Keefe. A little behind him, but catchable, and he drops it, and he was right. going to be close to a first down. He was pretty well covered, but could have got the first down, but it drops, and now it's going to be fourth and 21, so the Hillers will have to kick. And looks like Mahoney's deep. Tommy Bernardin will do the kicking. Mahoney, that's an easy one to get. That's right? an easy one. I, I can, <laughs> I'm not sure he related to some Mahoney, so I get that name. Yeah, you are. And Bernardin just a little poocher, and it's going to drop. I don't. Mahoney let it go, and he should have never let it go. Yeah. You got to catch those balls. It rolls all the way down to the five-yard line, and he's yeah. just going to come up. He gave it a little pooch. And he let it drop. Coach is going to let him hear something about that for sure. You know, call the fair catch, come up and get it. Yep. So with 7.53 to go in the third quarter, the Wolverines will take over at their own five-yard line. Mm. And apparently they don't want to send out the offense. Right. Uh, I think the... You know, this <laughs> it's almost like it's a change of quarter. I, I was going to say, do they think it's already? I mean, it's already a quarter's <laughs> gone by in time, but you would think that. Uh, I think that was a record number of flags in one quarter. Yeah. So, uh, I don't know what's going on here. This is a long called, delay. Must have called a timeout. Yep. Yeah. There it is. A timeout. <laughs> <laughs> so they take a timeout, then they call the timeout. Yeah, right. Well, if we're going to get charged one anyway, might as well yeah, take it. Yeah, might as well right? take it. Yeah, this has been a very interesting game wow. to watch. So I'd like to remind everyone to watch the volleyball game. They could go right next door at 6.30, where the Hills take on the Mohawks and Millers. Next week uh, is uh, Dick Peak against Ashland here on Friday. What is that? Dick Pick is uh, their big cancer uh, oh, fundraiser. Oh, okay. Gotcha, gotcha. Pink, yeah, gotcha. So as far as the Hillers schedule coming up, they have a a home date with Holliston next week. And Which? then the MIAA playoffs and or consolation round will begin, uh, what's that, Friday, November 2nd? Uh, or November 1st. Anyway, it's the first... Friday of November, they'll play those games. We don't know what that schedule will be like Correct. as it plays out. And then this year we host, I believe, probably the 96th annual. It's gonna be in that we should ballpark. Be, yeah, we should be around 96. 96 Thanksgiving Day game between the the Hillers and the Clockers. And Westwood, she's <laughs> oh, another hey, penalty. It's a whistle. Another penalty. Yeah, you know, if I if I didn't know better, I would think it's an August game scrimmage. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, this guy's got to be calling it just a little tight, right? Yeah. Nice. Well, maybe they don't want to get home. Maybe the rest don't want to get home. I do. <laughs> get a gonna get a message down there for me. Yeah. I got my Friday night back now that the uh, game's over. Well, right? th they get their Friday nights yeah. badly. That's right. <laughs> this is their first Friday. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the the tell the spouses are still at home, still at work. That's right. And then when it's game time, the yeah. Yeah, that's right. It's bad time. Yeah. All right. So that he works. picked up about about four on the on the play, second and eleven. Oh, yeah, second and nine. I'm sorry. And Mahoney, no, not Mahoney. That's uh, Faye on the carry. And he picks up a, a few yards. Gets out to about the, yeah, we'll call it the seven yard, seven, line, seven eight yeah. yard line. Well, actually, he's probably closer to the nine. That's just the way the angle is. No, you know what? He's only out to the, uh, yeah, maybe about the eight yeah. yard line. And that's third and gonna be third and seven. Then 
Ellie, he's, he's looking to throw. He's got double coverage. He's just threw into. Almost intercepted. Yeah, it was that Bernard. Yep. No, no. Sally, it's on the, uh, on the deflection and tension intended for Mark James. And that'll bring up fourth, fourth and about seven. And they're going to have to punt it from there, no doubt. Yeah. So still 6.30 to go in the third quarter. We got a. You know, all these years that I never put chairs for, for the broadcasters, I think this is one of those games that you'd probably like to have a chair. Yeah. <laughs> and the snap is good. And he gets a high end over a kick, and it's fair, fair catch, and he lets it go. Sally has let it go, and he another six, seven, eight yards on the on the roll. Oh, maybe that wasn't Sally. But anyway, it should have been, uh, could have had it right around the 50-yard line. Right. But nobody wants to catch the ball on this windy day. And it's working out for the punt team right now. All right, so the, the Hillers will start their drive at their own 45-yard line. Bernard and back to pass. Zaporosius on the wing, three receivers to the left. And here comes the blitz, and he gets it away to the single receiver down, and he got Bernard and Tommy Bernard and down the right sideline, and he's tack it, tackled down around the five yard line. But a nice throw under duress, number 21. Sean O'Shea Longin was in, but nobody's going downfield. So what happened here? The flag back here at the uh, 35. And. Are we talking offensive pass interference? We yep. are. Yes, we are. Oh, uh, boy, I'd like to see the replay on that. that yeah, uh, well, we can. A little, a little ticky tack there, maybe. I mean, yeah, there was, was contact, and he had to make his way around him. But I've never seen so many flags thrown in a high school football game. Yeah, this is more like or, uh, or any football game. This is more matter. like East Squad Pop Warner right now. That's what it reminds me. So that backs him up to the 30. So the long gain, it was a 50-yard gain, wiped out. And Bernard, in a quick toss out to the right, and he has, he has Salyards maybe. Oh, Keith, Keith, number six down there, down to about the 40-yard line, brings up second and 15. Uh, even longer than that, he didn't get quite to the 40 yard, and I got to the 38, second and 17. So he's got three receivers to the left, Mulvaney to the right, and a wide receiver to the right. And they're coming from the right hash. And yeah, that was a delayed snap somehow. The center didn't get it out. I saw everybody. Everyone moved. Yeah. That one was legit. Uh, delayed. So we're going to back it up. We'll call it second and 23. The camera doesn't show the penalty. That it doesn't? No. Now, if we had both cameras going with it, or is it? We, we might have got lucky. Yeah. John is staying pretty wide up there so he could get everything. Okay. All right, second and 23. <laughs> it's just... <laughs> And folks, th 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 <laughs> we got to mention again, this is the third quarter. <laughs> yeah, and there's still 4.49 to go in the third quarter. You might want to call a pizza in. We're going to be here for a while. i got to call my crew, make sure they can <laughs> get that volleyball game started <laughs> before I get there. And he throws down the sideline, and Hamblett catches the ball. Nice catch. It's got to be right around the first down. He's going to be about a yard short. Hamblett went up to get it. So it's going to be third. I think it's third down. I, I see a two over there. I saw a four over there, but I think it's third. And, he hit, and it's offside. And Mulvaney breaks it through. And he's going down the left sideline. He's going to be in for the score. But there's a flag on the play, and I'm guessing it's defensive offside. I'm the way everybody's reacting. Yeah. They like it. Yeah, he's. He's yep. pointing to the Westwood side. So it's going to be. It looks like 
Westwood. Yeah, so that was a too many men on the field. Too many men on the field. What's their second time doing that? Wow. And even with the 12th man, they couldn't get Mulvaney, who busted up the middle and, and out to the left, down, and beat everybody to the end zone. So Mulvaney goes. That had to be a 45, 55-yard touchdown run? Yes. So we'll go with 55 yards. Oh, it's 55. That's great. We'll go with 55. And the Hillers are up 20 to nothing right now, pending this extra point. And it's up, it's up, it's up, it's up, and it's good. Wait. That's like a lob wedge coming in there. You know, it was. It looks good. I was afraid it was going to fall in front of the, the post. So at, at 4.03, we'll call it a 55-yard TD run by Mulvaney. And the Hillers go up 21 to nothing with the extra point. Well, Mike, now we're starting to become a little bit of a separation here, and uh, hopefully they start it's, to run the ball and, and, right, and get, exactly. this, get let's, this clock uh, moving down a little bit. Let's run it, keep it going. There is no need for have this much time left to play. So I got a couple of announcements here. We had offensive player of the game last week against the midfield Warriors on offense, David Quinones. And on defense, Drew Saparosius. So the hats off to those two for a good game last week. And every week they do, the Hillers gather and they elect those performances for each week. And the ball just blew up the tee. <laughs> Maybe it's all the hot air up here. The flag's not even moving too. It's so. gotta be us, <laughs> it's gotta be the hot air. Yep. David Quinones, one of the, the big hogs up front last week. And he drives the ball right by number 29, George Maroon. And he's got nowhere to go. He picked it up around the, the two-yard nice line, makes his way all the way out to the nice – tackle. Makes it out to about the 12-yard line. And number 28 is on the tackle. 28, Eric Davis, the senior. Eric Davis, the junior, by fault. No, I'm sorry, it's Eric Davis, the senior. So the Wolverines will take over at the, well, we'll call it the 13 yard line, first and 10. Just a note that their starting quarterback was injured, the senior captain, Jake Paff. Injured. The second quarter hasn't seen action. Backup quarterback listed as a receiver. Danielli is the quarterback now. And he's going to throw the ball. And he's going to throw. And it's almost picked. Well played by Tommy Hamlet. Intended receiver, Shane Lonian. So that's second and 10 from the 13. Tommy Hamlet making his way into the announcement. And onto the play sheet with another pass defense. Nice catch in the last drive for the for the Hillers. Second and ten. Danielli looks the other way, looks, looks, throws, and he hits. He hits Rowan Curtin on the on the in or maybe a slant for about seven yards. It'd be third and three. At least it's manageable for Westwood. They haven't had too many manageable downs. No, not at all. And Ellie drops, he looks to the far side, it's caught, and, and it's going to be close with the reach out as Curtin lunged forward, but I think he's going to be a little short. No, nah, looks like they're moving him. Oh, they're moving him. So it was wow, a, that was a good reach. A very good effort yeah. by the wide receiver to get that first down because he was short. I'm, I'm not sure who was on the tackle. It could have been Eric Davis. And so they'll move it. Reset the chains at about the 26 yard line. Maybe the 20, I'm sorry, 24 yard line. And we have another whistle. And defensive. Oh. 
I don't know what that is. West foot offsides? That's usually a defensive offside sign. First and 15 from the 19. You got a, a stack trips to the right. And he's looking right and he's going to throw behind. And, and a great pursuit by Saparosius came down the line. Is it looks like he loses about three more. Yeah, James caught that ball with the stack. Well, maybe and one. Saparosius was able to track him down from the linebacker position. So second down, se second down and 15. 17. Plus they lost two on that yeah, one. Yeah, lost. <laughs> I guess so. Back around the 18-yard line, they could get out to the 34 for a first down. Then Yelly looks and he floats one out to Rowan, and he's going to pick up a few yards. Yep. Rowan Curtin on the coverage. I mean, on the catch, and he's out. Probably about eight. Eight, eight. Yards, yeah. Third and eight. Third and seven. Third and eight. Yeah, we'll call it third and oh, maybe third and nine. Call it third and nine. All right. Good call pick up it. on the play. Daniele has Hall in the backfield and the pistol behind him. Now he shifts him to his right. And a roll out to the right. And he's got Saparosius on his tail. Throws a nice ball down low for James. And they're giving him the catch. He yep. came right up, said, I caught it. And that's got to the down marker and came right yep. across. He had it. And he's got it. Lakasha trying to give his two cents by waving it off, but right. didn't. You always got to plead your case, no matter which side you believe. Did, that's right. Didn't quite, <laughs> didn't, get, didn't quite go his way, but yeah. that's all right. And we have uh, Daniele back to pass, back to pass, throws over the middle, and it's knocked away, knocked away. by Lakasha. The intended receiver, Curtin, had to go high for it. Lakasha was able to make up some ground and knock it out of his hands. Yeah, it was just brought to our attention at what time did the mosquitoes come out? 6.15 right? is, is the uh, Hopkins. Is, is the official uh, 6.15 rule? 6.15. So they have 45 minutes <laughs> the way this is to going. finish this up. <laughs> the way this is going, we might see one or two. I have to get out a half hour because then you got to get the crew out. Uh, It'll be six because then you have to get people safely to their cars. That's right. That's right. So Danielli back. He's going to throw over the middle again. And James oh. had one hand on it but couldn't get it in. He would have been probably short of the first down, but very close had he caught it. Salyards and Saparosius in the area. So that brings up a third and 10 from the Wolverine 35 yard line. And I can hear the band playing away a little bit over there. I can feel, you can feel the beat. Can't yeah. hear it. I guess I can feel it. And this play is taking a long time. So this back official puts up his hand. I believe it's 10 seconds to go to get the playoff. They generally don't call you for delay a game, but he's letting <laughs> you know. They're calling he's everything. Deep. He's got him he's open. Got he's got him open. Pereira on the tackle. Somehow he got loose. He split Pereira and Salyards and broke into the middle of the field. So it was a long pass. That should do it for the third quarter. It's a 35, 30 yard pass. And that'll be the last play of the third quarter at the end of three. The Hill is 21. Huh. The Hill is 21. Wolverines, nothing. Can you believe it? We are in the fourth quarter. I can. I can believe it. I think I'd be arriving right now if the game was on uh, a normal time, right? <laughs> I just looked at our record deck to see, and we're at our second hour. Two hours, five minutes of recording. That includes our, uh, 10 minutes, halftime. So it's 5.30, yeah, 5.30. 5.30. Yeah. Yeah, this has been a long game. I'm just hoping that our other crew, Barry Arnott, Bob Hamilton, Tom and Samantha Dings, are heading over to the high school now to get ready for Fast City Volleyball. That's all. Coming up next here on HCAM, he'll take on Millis. 
Yeah, is it one of those things where um, you get bumped because something's more important than the other? No, it's, uh, <laughs> the game's going to stop whether we're there or not. So they don't, they don't wait for it's, us. It's like live coverage. It, we're leaving the network to go uh, right. bring you the start of because of contract obligations, right. that it's, kind of thing. Yes, it's, and it's <laughs> definitely not like uh, you get the TV breaks yeah. where the TV <laughs> judges, you know, the timeouts and everything. So you don't have that. Yeah, you don't have the official looking up in the booth well, saying, okay, the, we're back. We were supposed to go live at 6.30 with the game starts, and they decided to get done early. It, it, and they decided to start the game at, at 20 after 6 instead of 6.30, and it just drives you crazy. It certainly does. Daniele coming at Hamlet, running him down, and he just throws it. He throws it. Oh, he tried oh, to get it. Oh, he did have a receiver. But, but he had uh, he had Gallagher open. He had Tommy Hamlet and Hayes, Pierce, and Woodruff all over him to yeah. get him out of the pocket. So he did everything he could to give it a shot. He had his receiver down along the right sideline, but couldn't had to throw it too far out of bounds. Almost like he was throwing it away. Throwing it away, right? I thought he was going to throw it away. I didn't see uh, Gallagher there. So Daniele, the shotgun with Hall, the pistol behind him. And it's a quick funnel to James, and he's got a little bit of room. And right about four or five out of it? Yeah, it gets about five yards yeah. out of it, so it makes it a manageable third down. Be third and about five from the 30, from the, just inside the 30 yard line. We'll call it the 29. know if they're giving uh, Faye a break, but it seems that Hall is getting a little more of the reps in the backfield now for the Wolverines. I wasn't sure if that was ACDC played or if that was the bells to one of the <laughs> one hour till the Triple E starts. And Lakasha on the tackle, and right over the hit, right over the hands of Saparoja, Daniele put it in there to James. Oh, maybe it was, uh, maybe it was Curtin. Yep. And. That'll bring up first and 10 as the Wolverines got a little something going now. And Ily in the back in the shotgun. And it's a handoff straight up the middle to Hall. And he doesn't get much. A, he got sandwiched by two hillers coming from each side. We're able to grab him. Slowed him down. He picked up about three on the play. Second and seven. 10.22 to go in the final quarter. Barring any miraculous comeback by the Wolverines, which they had several years ago. They throw, I think yeah. they threw three touchdowns in the fourth in quarter. The fourth quarter, yes, to, to come back and win. Come back and win it. And it's a hard throw over the middle, and it's wow. intended for, for Curtin, but broken up by Salyards. What a nice uh, pass, too, that was. He's got a pretty good arm on him. Yeah. He can just probably hasn't been getting all those reps and right. I mean, you know, for the most part, wide receivers can throw the ball because usually they catch you and they're throwing it back. Yeah, so they they got, they got good hands and yeah, you know, good strong fingers and and the like. This kid's a bigger kid too and sure. probably has a bigger set of hands. And uh, Faye makes his way back into the backfield. And the blitz, and Daniele steps up, and he's got to keep it. He's got to go for that first down. Get, beats it and gets into the end zone. So that'll be an 18-yard touchdown run by Daniele, or Daniele. And he finally got to the corner, but the blitz came off the edge. It looked like Zach Levy was coming in from the left side, yep. and he just stepped up, made his way to the sideline, and then up. So it's an 18-yard 18, 18 touchdown run. By Daniele. And that makes it 21 to 6. And Daniele's going to kick. And James Jr. is going to hold. Now let's see what we have here. It's a down, and it looks good. Uh, it's it, good. It is good. So Daniele makes it, gets the extra point to make it 21 to 7. The Hillers with 9.51 to go as they come up field. We'll give you that 
each game sports is sponsored by our viewers and by the dentist at Hoppington. Founded by Dr. Jill Tanzi in 2003, the dentist at Hoppington provides state-of-the-art dental care in a comfortable and relaxing setting to patients of all ages. They are located at 77 Main Street and online at hopdent.com. Right upstairs, second floor of our building. There you go. Right H upstairs. HKM headquarters. They happen to be my dentist. HKM World Studios right there. H Cam World <laughs> Studios. We can reach. We have the reach. We do have the reach. We have, uh, in fact, we are reaching this week. This is uh, Connections Week at H Cam, where we are reaching out to everybody, showing how we connect the community. We have uh, been pushing um, ourselves in our social media, our, uh, Instagram, our website, Facebook, Twitter, a uh, little bit of YouTube, everything, and. Uh, we're getting the word out. Get how we out connect there. the community. Bring, bring games like this here to the people at home. Daniele is going to be kicking north to south. Salyards, Mulvaney deep, but nobody's been going too deep. No. Everything's been a more of a squibber kind of thing. And it's an onside kick. Oh, it, it hit another player. It, uh, it was an illegal kick. Yeah. It was touched They're just going to let it go? No, they give an option, I think. But he'll take it where we got Oh, they're going to take it where he hit. hit. Yeah. Good. Perfect. Yeah, that wasn't exactly how they had the design, I can tell you that. Really? Why? <laughs> Why would you say that? Uh, just, just saying, you know, you generally don't touch the ball three yards in. Yeah. So, as a result, the Hillers will get the ball in terrific field position at the 43-yard line of the Wolverines. And I'll, I'll be honest with you, quite frankly, it hasn't been good for them to start on this side, Not of, the this side of the field. Not on this side of the field, right. They've had that sh shown already. So, Bernardin barking it out. Three receivers to the left, Mulvaney to his right. Looks over to get the signal from coach Mulvaney moves over to the left defense resets and the option and Bernard gets smoked and likely going to be a hold on this but Mulvaney comes all the way down to the 20 yard line on the on the pitched ball but generally when that ball was thrown I mean when the uh, flag was thrown it must have been a holding that allowed him to get to the outside that right. freely There was nobody out there on after the pitch, but Bernard gets smoked by number 52, Liam Dulia. There's your hold right there, 10 yards. All right, so that backs him up. First down, first and about 18. Yeah, looks it. Being a spot foul. And he's got trips right as Bernard and Tommy Bernard gets set over here to the near side. Bernard throws, and it's caught by Tommy Bernard as he slant, slanted into the middle, picked it out with his hands, and it was well covered. And. Number six, Kyle Burgess on the coverage and tackle. Gets it down to about the 30-yard line, first and 10 for the Hillers as they get up to the line nice of scrimmage play. quickly. And he hands off to Mulvaney, and he's picking his way through, and another flag, likely a hold again. Likely a hold again, as this gets pretty frustrating for the players as well. No, it's, against, it's against the... Uh, Wolverines. Oh, nice run by Mulvaney. We'll have a few more tack onto it. He picked up about eight yards on the play. Let's see what the call is. Personal foul. Personal foul. Face, face mask. mask. It's a face mask call against Westwood. The up. All the way down to the 11-yard line. 
So they can they can get a first down technically, I guess. Well, you think uh, with this game going on, as long as it did, yeah, right. Even should have been here. I can see the uh, girls are done with their field hockey. Oh, the name is twins are uh, walking by. I got you. Yeah, see, that's they, they looks like they tied. I don't know who they played. I can assume they played Westwood. And the ball is caught by <laughs> Keith, and he gets the touchdown. So an 11 yard pass. Pass to Keith, number six in your program. Picks up the touchdown from the 11. It's now 27 to seven pending the extra point. Aiden Kelly with the hold. Snap is good. And the hold is Excellent. good. And, and the kick is good. Laces were out. Everything executed. And your Hillers take a 28-7 lead as we head back upfield with 8.08 .08 to go in the game. That was a, a pretty well executed drive, Don. I'm done. Yeah. Mike. <laughs> Uh, Where is Don? We need Don. Pretty, pretty well executed drive uh, by the Hillers. Yep. And uh, Bernard and doing most of it uh, through the air. A couple of nice runs by Mulvaney. But uh, I would say this game is safely. Yeah, I'm going to say safely uh, in the in the bag. And the cheerleaders do their, their push ups. Twenty-one push-ups. So. Some good technique, some not so good technique, but you know, those are the push-ups. Push-ups to push-up. Push-ups to push-up, right? It's getting pretty chilly too, so they might want to have a, you know, they might like to do those push-ups uh, every now and again. I wouldn't mind doing one right now if I could. <laughs> no, I'm good, thanks. I mean, I, I could do it, I just, I can't do it in the I press hear, box. I hear you. Thank you. Ethan Champlin on the kick, and he line drives it down. James is gonna pick it up at the, about the 18 yard line. Goes across the field, gets the corner, and turns it up, and he's still going, gets out to about the 42-yard line. A nice run by James, but it just might be a little too little, a little too late. Look like, yeah, I give 14. Nick, Nicholas S, Nicholas S on the, uh, on the uh, tackle. And we got another penalty. Shocker. What a shocker. <laughs> surprise, surprise, surprise. <laughs> so from the 42, it's going to go all the way back to all the way back to about the 26 yard line and my goodness gracious the man the myth I, the legend I, I, I might have just seen a ghost <laughs> uh, that's true you're right <laughs> well 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 welcome 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 to the booth my good friend and colleague here for the last four years donnie layman how are we doing don how, how you doing rick i'm doing well Jeez, i didn't think mikey was going to put me right to work i'm out of breath that's all right I've been, I've been carrying him. I'll carry you for now, all right? <laughs> what else is new? I'll tell you what, that score looks good. Yeah, yeah, it's been an uh, interesting game. It's probably been, and I'm not kidding, probably 30 penalties called in this game. Wow, it's a trickle-down effect from the NFL. I think so. I think so. Well, I was down on the lower field. Field hockey had a tough uh, tough game there for uh, for parent, parent appreciation, but... Um, I saw that they were up 14 nothing after at halftime. Yeah, they were at half 14 nothing. Yeah. And then what happened since then? Well, we've scored two more, and they scored one, but most of it through the air. Bernard has thrown well. He's hit both. Uh, he's hit. Uh, let's see, at 4:03, a 55-yard run by Mulvaney, and then uh, an 18-yard hookup to. Oh, that was Daniele. Then 11-yard pass to Keith, just just his previous one. This is uh, the, the booth looks fantastic here. We've got a, a monitor where we can see. It's a it's an eight second delay to the stream. Okay, but we can at you least can see. see. Yeah. The problem is you're still watching this when you go down. It's, it's it, we need it a little more. But Daniele hands off to to Faye, 
and he picks up about uh, yeah, we'll call it call it five. You know, it's going to be third and about two. So third and one. Looks like Westwood got a little bit of size on their offensive line there. They, they are fairly big on the line. They lost their starting quarterback in the second quarter. Okay. Uh, looks like he hurt his shoulder some way, but oh, Faye gets. Wrap the eye. It's a. It's going to be a, a horse collar or a face mask on this call. As the the back got got wrenched back. Tried to go for the quick snap there to catch him off guard. Well, they've been going pretty quick. They, they both teams can line right up and get going. Yeah. Uh, so now you guys have touched on Coach McLean, new new here. Taking over. Got the same energy he's had as a, as yeah. a, as a uh, defensive coordinator now as the head coach. He's a fun guy. He's got a lot of energy, and it is going to be a personal foul. Bring the ball probably out close to midfield. Well, how, about, how about midfield? We'll call it midfield. Field looks to be in great shape. Yeah, I was wondering if it would be a little wet with the rain. We had quite a few inches of rain, but we had a lot of wind too, so it probably dried out pretty yeah. good. But nobody's really been slipping. It's been... In good traction. You got a stack trips left at a for the Wolverines, and you got Hall back there with Dan Daniele. And he's going to step up again. He's got the long touchdown run as he gets tripped up at, for about a five yard gain out to about the 45. Yeah, the defensive end number nine. And again, I haven't watched the team yet this year, <laughs> but he had nice pre penetration. The quarterback. Read that, stepped it up, and he made the uh, the best that he could do there. So, so good five. luck. We don't have a nine on the roster. That is okay. uh, Ethan uh, Champlin. Okay. Who likely forgot his jersey. And oh, it's, geez. It's probably taking a little bit of heat right there, around. There was a time in uh, in life where you wouldn't get on the field if you forgot your jersey, <laughs> but this is a uh, new generation. Yeah. Uh, so, Danielli's back. Oh, he's setting That's up holding. a screen. He was trying to set up a screen. That's and it was intended for Curtin. But it oh. looked like it was a screen, but maybe not. It look, yeah, well, he took a deep drop there, and 54, um, Luke McDonald was being held, but maybe the refs are tired of throwing the flag here with 547 left in the fourth quarter. They should, they should be. Really, there's been that many? <laughs> in, in one drive, in one series alone, there were six flags thrown that ultimately had the Hillers have to punt from, you know, fourth and... Well, it was in a row. Yeah, it was in a well, row. You know, it's, it's funny because I, I, I thought the game was going on, it took a, taking a long time. Yeah, well, it was an hour and ten in the first half. And he's hit, and he's... Nice catch. That's interference by Salyards, but uh, Mahoney made the catch anyway, uh, and Daniele made the throw while he was... Was it Hamlet maybe that rushed in and, and yeah. got a piece of him? Yeah, it was Tommy Hamlet had good pressure there, and the quarterback stepped up, made a nice throw where the receiver had to come back for it, which caused Cole to, to, to kind of come over his back a little bit. But it was good concentration to make the catch. So you spot the ball inside the 30 to about the 27-yard line, maybe the 28. And uh, the lights have come on here at uh, Dave Hughes Stadium. And Yelly throws again. He's got him open. He's got James open down the middle, and he overthrew him. Barrera on the coverage. Just a little bit of a chase, but uh, that ball was thrown on time or on target. They'd have six. Yeah, that was a nice post route that the uh, Westwood boy ran, and uh, the quarterback just stepped up, just overthrew him, or that would have been a touchdown. And as we said, this is uh, junior Connor Daniele. He's actually listed as a wide receiver. Stepping in and quarterback duty. He's done an admirable job doing that. Of course, we wish the best to Jake Paff, who injured his shoulder in the second quarter. Daniele back to throw. He's got time, and he's oh. gonna, finally going to get sacked by Saparosius and cleaned up by, uh, by David Quinones. Jonas. That's that's what I would call a coverage sack there, Rick. He, he had plenty of time. He had three, four seconds easily, and uh, and, uh, and and he had plenty he had plenty of time to throw the ball, and there just wasn't anybody open. And then Saparoch just kind of broke through at the last minute and, and got him with a with a you know big loss here. So, I mean, the Wolverines, you know, this is uh, they're in desperate times here. This is. Um, Obviously, two down territory. You've got to get a touchdown here. 
Mike and I were conversing a little bit about a few years back when Westwood threw for three touchdowns. Uh, touch why do we have to? Quarter. I thought you guys were being nice to me. Why do you have to bring that game up? <laughs> Jeez. Was, was Sammy was Sammy playing? <laughs> yes, that? it was horrible. Oh my God! I didn't know how many years ago it was. They yeah, were playing was, together. I, to I me, remember you know it. It was a nightmare. Well, it's not like you played it, Don. Well, well, believe well, me. No, it was like he played <laughs> it. If, if its kid <laughs> was in it, I'll you guys you know. You guys know how I am. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I wasn't calling the game. I wasn't calling the game. I was I was over there pacing. So how many years ago was that? Five years. Uh, ago? that was their senior year. So we're, yeah, he's a senior now. So that'd be four four years ago, I guess. All right. So it's. So they, uh, they're not okay. They're not playing. It's, no, it's fourth and a long ways. Daniele back. He's just going to throw. Mahoney was open in the center of the field, but he just throws a hard shot to intended receiver was was Burgess and he just ran out of time and space. He kind of has a funny way to throw the ball there. He, you know, he looks like a receiver. Yeah. Well, he <laughs> can, he's, he's throwing a couple of good balls. You're right. He got a little hitch there somewhere. There. Yeah. That a lot of balls go low. So the Wolverines turn it over on downs and 28 to 7 with 3:20 to go. So have you guys discussed the um, what the playoff situation is? Well, I know that we don't really know. I mean, this moves the Hill is to 2 and 3. Um, no, two and four. Two I'm and sorry. Four, Three yeah. and four could get you in. We've seen that. Okay. But right now they sit ninth in Division Four South, and it's. Uh, 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 How many get in? Eight. I don't know if it's eight or six or four. Or I'm guessing it's four. Right. Um, so I think that's a pretty big hill to climb for them. Okay. But we'll know uh, after the Hollison game. You know they they needed this one to. All right, and and Salyard gets away. On a little out pattern, cuts across the field. He's down at the 20, and it looks like he's going to get down to about the 10 yard line. So Salyuts picks up about 55 yards on the play. And on the tackle, number 34, Colin Faye. So the Hillers get it all the way down to the 10 yard line. Yeah, Cole Salyard just kind of ran it out there. He was open, came back for the ball, made a nice move to get around one guy. Number 11, uh, Tommy Bernardin threw a nice downfield block to just break that and get an extra another 30 yards. Excellent effort by both boys. So he's going to throw it. He looked left, comes back right, and he's got – and it's picked off by Mahoney. Mahoney's cut in front of Salyards, and he gets it out all the way to the 34-yard line. But uh, looked like that was intended for Cole Salyards. Or possibly Keith, but I think it was Salyards and Mahoney cut in front. My Don. Yeah, I mean that's a, that's a <clears throat> you know that's a tough tough call there. I mean you're you know you kind of running the clock out here and throwing. That's a dangerous pass to throw any time. Um, glad that the Hillers recovered there and uh, and didn't let that kid take it all the way back. Or that could have been a well it giving them the a last, little bit of momentum. Could have, mass, <laughs> could have made the last two twenty a little more interesting. Right. For sure. But uh, they've been struggling. Westwood has uh, getting the offensively. Yeah, just struggling getting things going. They, they, What's their record? They, they are two and three coming in, but they had not won in the Tri Valley yet. Okay. Uh, so they'll be continue to go winless. They were sitting at number five uh, in the in the poll. Okay. At, at, uh, Division four South. Another too many men. That's gonna drive a coach crazy. Well, this is the third one. Third one. Wow. <laughs> The interesting thing is you almost never see it on offense. <laughs> I know. That's true. <laughs> that's true. You know, hey, what are you doing here? <laughs> I'm supposed to be here. You know, at least you spread out a little more on defense, right? <laughs> that's the third one for Westwood? Yes. Wow. Yes, it is. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, Daniele hands off right up to Faye, and he's oh, taken Faye, down by right. Hamlet at about the 30-yard line. Some aggressive blocking going in there. 52 is trying to throw so his weight around. Looks like we're getting some second teamers in here. And number 19, Declan Hur makes his way onto the field for Salyards. All right, so with 146 to go, Daniele hands it off to that's a new number. Number 29 is George Maroon. And he gets out to about the 34, 33-yard line. 
Yeah, I mean, there's still everyone's playing hard out there. You know, even if you don't, you know, you work all week in practice, as, especially as a second stringer, you get your opportunity to get out on that field, and it's uh, it's it's opportunities you never forget. I don't know what just happened over there, but there's a flag was thrown late. It's against Westwood. I'm guessing it's against the bench. And I think maybe one official's just had enough. I mean, uh, I don't know what that is. That behind the, and there's another, there's another flag. Yeah, uh, it's coming from the. That's a bench uh, foul. No, no, you can't have a timeout now. Yeah, he's had enough of this guy. Is the Westwood coach? Where did he come from? I don't, uh, I don't know. He's Brad Pindell. I don't know where he's from. He's been here for now. What um, Manti was the coach before that? Yeah, I so remember probably, Manti. Probably three but three years now. Yeah, I, I, I know he's been gone for a couple of years. Yeah, so that's obviously frustration building in, and right, uh, you know, not liking necessarily what's going on, and well, at this point, you just want to finish the finish the game strong. Yeah, you would here. think that uh, show some sportsmanship, and let's let's go, let's move on. And we're gonna have a timeout, and that brings the ball all the way back to the 16-yard line. You know, you don't want this to get too unsportsmanlike here. You no. just want to get it going. Yeah, I know. Run no, a few no. plays. Let's get out of here. Right. Call it a day. So what? what is the plan? So next week, unfortunately, it is it is afternoon game next right week. Right now, it, it's set at 2 o'clock next Saturday. Yep, yep. But uh, any kind of frost or freeze before then. You think they would move it back? That would be great. I think they would. I well, I'm here were. if it's Friday night, Ricky. I, I can't be here Friday night. That's the oh, only, really? That's oh, that's the, the rub. Thing. Oh, boy. That's the rub. I can do Saturday at 2. Okay. And there's a, a run up the this middle. This is back. why Mike Terosian gets the big bucks. Yeah, he's got to do all the juggling. I think Maroon up the middle for about, we'll call it 5. And 4th and Cornell's to go. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just going to let the no why is the clock stopped it's not stopped oh oh what well, it looked like it was at 105 for forever so he's going to just run it down and call a timeout i guess he is and he's just waiting for it to get there yeah so it's going to be 42 seconds to go, a fourth and a long ways to go. And he just doesn't want to have that much time on the clock. Uh, you know, not that it really matters at this point. but I would think the Hillers, if they take possession, they'll just get in victory formation here, and let's call it a day. You would think. Is Holliston at the top of they the – They are. Uh, they're in Division 5 South and, yep. uh, you know, one of the top three teams at 5-0 and oh right now. Okay. Uh, I believe they play Ashland this weekend. So, oh, a bad kick and goes out of bounds. Looking forward to getting another. I'm looking forward to getting another shot at Ashland on Thanksgiving. I can tell you that. Well, you've always been a Thanksgiving Day gay. You, <laughs> could, you know, we can open up and Thanksgiving. <laughs> are we ready for Thanksgiving yet? No, and I, you've always been that guy. Yeah. You know, I went. I but I did. I did see the Hillers play over in Ashland a few weeks ago, and um, you know they played well. Um, they. They had every opportunity to, to win the game. It kind of got away from them at the end there. Um, but they, uh, I, I think that the revenge is going to be on their mind. And if there's one way to erase a sour season or a season where you have a, a record that is, uh, you know, sub 500, yeah. it's a win on Turkey Day. Right. All right, so to wrap this game up, it's 23 seconds to go. Your Hillers will take home a 28 to seven win, a 40 yard pass Bernardin to Bernardin in the first, a four yard interception return by Saparosius made it 14 to nothing, a 55 yard run uh, by Mulvaney, 403 in the third made it 21 to nothing, an 18 yard Danie uh, Daniele run uh, made it 21 to seven and then the final score with a pass to Keefe, 18 or 11 yards, 28 to seven. Your Hillers take the game by that score, 28 to seven. I would like to uh, thank Mike Terosian stepping in for Don Lehman, who got the last eight 
minutes, so maybe five All minutes. I, I was happy. Board. I was really happy to make it over here. That's right. Do I get right. paid my whole salary yeah, for the you game, get you though? All. Oh, I, I get paid I the whole salary. So for John Ritz, Mike DeRozan, uh, Brian Herr on the music, he's Don Lehman. I'm Rick DeSena. We'll see you next week versus Holliston.